I gotta dump this out, take this little humidifier out, because little Otis in here has a bit of an issue. Hey, turtle nerds, welcome back to another video. Welcome to my college dorm. I'm over here, back at school, and I got a couple of things going on here. Please disregard that light. I'm a human disaster, and I'm struggling to deal with these things. So I planned on making a video today on my lovely little terrapin hatchlings that I got. There was a fun story behind two of them. There was a little less fun story behind another three of them or four of them. But rather than that, today I decided to take a look at little baby Otis to see how he was growing in his little enclosure. So when I came in here and I went to feed him, he likes to hide over here now. I decided to take a look at him and see how his growth was. I saw that he's beginning to curve upwards on either side and he just looks a little disproportionate as i looked more into this and i asked some experts it turns out it's for this reason right here all of this is super dry so i've taken a few circumstances in order to combat the dryness of my room and how there was a total lack of humidity in this enclosure. I have a reptifogger that I use to pump basically mist and fog all the time into the enclosure. And I would use a spray bottle like every day and spray the heck out of this enclosure. The only issue is that this heat lamp's really strong, so it would dry it out very consistently, like all the time. So now that I know that both of those methods are not working, they're not enough to keep the humidity levels high enough for little baby Otis to thrive, I am sort of freaking out and I'm going to make some changes. So this video is going to be showing you what changes I make, how I identified the problem, and how I'm going to permanently make sure that this doesn't really happen again. This lighting is really so if you guys remember, I had little baby Otis on a screened in porch outside my house in South Carolina. That went really well because it was really humid all the time. And I never thought about the moss, the sphagnum moss ever drying out until I came here to school and it kept drying out every day. And I realized this is a big issue. Now, I never thought that it was negatively impacting little baby Otis until I saw that the growth was beginning to curve upwards and it was starting to impact the shape of a shell. Therefore, my plan for this enclosure is to flood it and make half of it completely aquatic. Box turtles live in China. They live in ranges where they can go into ponds and streams loosely whenever they want to. So I wanna to try to replicate that for little baby Otis here. Okay, mortals, here's the game plan. We're gonna take all the hatchlings that you guys have not met yet, and they are all gonna go in this tub because it's deeper and they like the depth more than Otis would. Otis can't use the depth of a tub. He can only use the footprint for the square footage, not the volume. This is longer and bigger than this space. He will be able to use more square footage in this tub than in this little tub. And the turtles that are in this tub will go in this tub because it's depth and volume. And because I love math. I got my car and there were ants in there. I don't like ants. So we're a little, little high energy today, but it's okay. Cause this was supposed to be about the hatchlings, not about Otai, but now Otai is taking priority over the hatchling. And I haven't uploaded in 24 days because school hard, school big hard, but do it cause it's good for you. Okay, so I'm gonna be grabbing all of the hardscape stuff, the filter, the heater, the rocks and the plants and moving it into what is gonna be the new hatchling tub that's gonna go right there. And then this I'm going to fill with that dirt and moss and then bring it outside to bake in the sun. And the babies will go in this for right now. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull out the baby terrapins one by one, put them in here, then pull out all the hardscape, put it in here in their new setup. That's just some salt. I think that will work. So first off, I just need to pull out the babies. Okay, they're angry. I'm gonna stop recording so I can move all this into here so they don't have to be out of here for too long. Hey, turtle nerds. So uh, excuse my little interruption here. Uh, as you might be able to hear, I'm sick. I'm in the middle of editing right now. But basically what happened was when I turned off the camera, sometimes I have to just go really hard setting up the turtle enclosures because getting the turtles in their enclosures and set up is worth more than me trying to figure out better angles to film at and like getting the footage. So sometimes I will just cut off the footage and go like really nuts at making the turtle enclosures in order to get them back in their homes and comfortable because I don't want to stress out the turtles more than necessary and I felt like it would have taken a lot longer for me to film the whole process 
process of setting up these two enclosures uh, rather than if I just stopped filming and then showed you the enclosures afterwards. So with that being said, here are the new enclosures. I'm going to show you a quick clip of Otis loving his new enclosure the first day that I already put him in it. So I just went to go eat dinner and I've been gone for maybe 45 minutes. I was looking for Otis because he normally was hiding in his little hide there. I was looking around at where he could have burrowed and didn't really see any obvious spots. And then I looked into here and there he is, utilizing the aquatic side of his hide. I am not an expert in everything and I'm still learning as well and you can see that clearly he has been yearning for an aquatic portion of his enclosure and that's made abundantly clear by the fact that he has immediately gone in and begun utilizing this and I can tell as well because you can see how he burrowed out from right here. That's why all of this mud has sort of slid out into the water portion and I'm sure over time it'll slide out and even further. So here's the setup that I have. Like I said, I put all of the hatchlings, you can see them all over there, in this new black tub. I have this UVB lighting that's lighting up this little half of the enclosure and this half of Otis's enclosure. The heat lamps have been swapped out. Here is the half aquatic portion of the enclosure. I have this little fogger going to keep the humidity high. A nice heat lamp on the hide. That's actually Otis moved the hide here. But before I disturb that, that you can see his little sleepy face right there. He's just burrowed himself down and he has been utilizing the aquatic part of this enclosure. I have this reptifogger going during the day. I have this little water portion with some nice sphagnum moss in it for him to hide in. And I have the nice little land area that I have all set up as well. And videos on the little hatchlings will be coming up next week. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more of what I'm doing here in my college dorm, make sure to let me know in the comments. Subscribe and hit the bell notification thingy to get updated when I make new videos. I will be increasing the quality of production with my new camera that I have for this semester, thanks to my experimental film class. So thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll show you a full video of the hatchlings for next week's video, but if you wanna see pictures of them, make sure to go to my Instagram and check out a little sneak peek of them all. So thank you guys again so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.